Tracy time. Time for another moment with me, Tracy T. OMG, it's Monday. How you doing today? Let me tell you something. I am so unbelievably grateful. It has been a marvelous Monday so far. But now I told y'all it's New Direction November, right? So you know with the new direction, that means we got to do new things in a new way. We got to have a new mindset. So Mondays will not be motivation Mondays. Make it happen Mondays, okay? So I want you to be motivated. But first, let me let me check you on something real quick. How many times have you given yourself the opportunity? Wait, 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 wait. Let me back up. Come on in here. Come on in here. Get on in here with me. Because I know what y'all thinking. Like, we were looking for you at 1130. Where are you, Trace? Well, I have good news. I had an opportunity to... Um, be a blessing and be blessed. So I took advantage of that opportunity. It pushed me a little bit behind my schedule, but you know what? You have to be flexible and adaptable, right? So now listen, here's what I'm gonna say. Motivation Mondays. So we're shifting gears. Remember I told you it's a new direction November. So my focus is gonna be very concentrated going forward. On Mondays, we're gonna have motivation to make it happen Monday. On Wednesdays, it's gonna be Wellness Wednesdays. And every Friday is Black Friday. Even though we have Black Friday coming up, we're gonna have Black Friday every Friday. So that'll be a focus and feature for black businesses because I told you I'm, I'm passionate about making sure that we have absolute support of local and black businesses. All right, what are you eating for lunch today? What have you been doing today? Did you get up and get yourself together? Have you had a productive morning? OMG, I have. Let me tell you something. Over the weekend, did you get overwhelmed with information? Let's first take a minute and breathe it out. I'm going to show y'all some breathing exercises on Wednesday. We're going to do a breathing exercise on Wednesday, so get ready for that because I see so many people now with their shoulders in their earlobes, with their stress all over their face. So we're going to breathe on Wellness Wednesday, so get ready. But now, let's talk about Motivation Monday. And so here's what I'm about to call you on. And y'all can say amen and ouch, or you can say not applicable. Mondays. How many of us love Monday? No one ever said no one ever. Yay, it's Monday. But now here's how I'm going to challenge you on that. Because on Mondays, it's a fantastic way to know that you're in control when you start your week. But here's what we always do. You give yourself an opportunity to think, Oh, on Monday, I'm going to do this. On Monday, I'm going to start that. On Monday, I'm going to start my diet. On Monday, I'm going to start eating better. On Monday, I'm going to exercise. Monday morning, first thing, I'm going to exercise. On Monday, I'm going to call this such and such. On Monday, I'm going to stop lying to yourself. Yes, you. Here's what you need to do. Give yourself realistic goals. Make that, that thing happen. But if you're setting yourself up for Monday to come, that's not what you need to wait on. So get motivated and know that you can start your next now, now. You don't have to wait till Monday. Don't put the burden on Monday. That's not on Monday. Hello? Hey, Derek, how you doing? It's not on Monday for you to, for, it's not Monday's fault that you waited until today to say you're going to start doing whatever. And then you know what you do? You lie to yourself. Because then you say, oh, yeah, I'm going to exercise today. And here's a perfect opportunity. Y'all can go and literally have a fantastic time with Derek who's on here now, so y'all give Derek some love with his DLS jams, Derek Lamont Stanley. He is a certified Zumba instructor. He has regularly posted Zumba classes for, guess what, free. Derek, free. So you post on here, boo, when you do your next Zumba class, but they can go on your own Facebook page and look at free, F-R-E-E, -E, free Zumba class. So that's not Monday. That's not Monday's fault that you didn't do that. Let's not give Monday the, the opportunity to be the blame because you lying to yourself. You can't make it happen on Monday if you're saying on Monday I'll do X or Y or Z. Wrong. No. What you need to do is give yourself the latitude to create a realistic goal. Because see, what happens so oftentimes, hey, Edmund, what happens so oftentimes, y'all, is we give ourselves these dreams and wishes and hopes but then we don't push ourselves and hold ourselves accountable to follow through, right? How many times have you said, I'm going to do this, and you put it down in your head, you commit to it, but you don't write it down? Am I wrong? You don't write that thing down. So, you know, if it's in your mind and you haven't written it down, then you don't see it. And then if you don't see it, you don't have to hold yourself accountable for it. So that's a lie. That's a lie you're telling to yourself. Not a lie. It's a lie. It's a lie. So stop lying to yourself. 
make a goal and stick to it. You can make it happen. And here's the thing. Ooh, turkey burger sounds good for lunch, Derek. You can make it happen. And here's the thing. The goals that you have, you need to create short-term goals and long-term goals. That's how you create milestones. If you have a long-term goal, it's great. You can do it. But give yourself some incremental successes in the process. Are y'all following me? Are you with me? Are you, you, you checking out? You picking up what I'm putting down? Because if you're making it happen, you got to be motivated on Mondays. You can't set yourself up for failure because you're putting yourself in a position where you're lying to yourself. If you're going to really give yourself a goal that you want to achieve on Monday, you got to write it down. And then you got to give yourself some really measurable, we're going to talk about smart goals. That's what that is. It's making a smart goal. But don't blame Monday. Monday comes every week. Every seven days, Monday's back here. And people love to hate on Monday. Well, Monday didn't do anything to you. You did something to Monday. Because Monday's what you make it. Am I right? Anybody? Hello? Monday is what you do to it. So here's what I do to my Mondays. Just so you'll know. I literally write down. Now, for those of you who don't believe me, here's my planner. I literally write down the things that I want to get done because it gives you some accountability. And here's the other thing. It helps you keep track, y'all, of what you've accomplished. It's a fantastic way to celebrate it. For example, I, Tracy T. Rowe, said, I, Tracy T. Rowe, am gonna do my level best goal for Monday to make sure, tangible, I'm gonna send one post out on Monday about the importance of Georgia Senate race. One post on Monday about the importance of the Georgia Senate race. So it's Monday, it's 12.07. I have not yet sent it, but it's lunchtime. It's a perfect time. Now, do I want my post to be impactful? Absolutely. So I'm going to make sure that I post that and not just put it in the thing and say, support the Georgia Senate race. I'm going to say, here's how you should support the Georgia Senate race, and here's how. Then mission accomplished. That's a make it happen Monday. That has absolutely nothing directly to do with me as a goal, but how does it impact me and how does it impact you? Glad you asked. Because if the Senate is run by the Democrats, we have a chance for President Biden to have a chance in his whole term. Y'all don't hear me. DLS Jams on Saturday at 10 a.m. on Derek Lamont Stanley's personal page on Saturday. Uh-huh, you have a Mexican for lunch, you're just being lazy. Well, you know what, Edmund, if you if you plan to give yourself a day and have some self-care with some good Mexican food, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Hey, Adrian, how you doing? It's Make It Happen Motivation Monday. So y'all tell me, what are some of the things you do to keep yourself accountable to make sure that you're making it happen and you stay motivated on Monday? Because we're going to talk about this. Today, we're talking about lying to yourself and holding yourself accountable. Many of us, myself included, have fail to allow ourselves to achieve whatever the goal is that we want because we lie to ourselves. And why do we let ourselves get away with it? If somebody else was lying to you, you call them out on it. You say, well, no, that's unacceptable. But for yourself, you just let it go. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm not going to eat any sweets. Ooh, but give me that donut. Girl, that spice donut. Ooh, that spice donut tastes so good. Yeah, but that's, no. What happens that we allow ourselves to do that? What happens when, when you allow yourself to not be held accountable to make your goal? And then you end up setting yourself up for a self-fulfilling prophecy of failure. And if you're in a position where you're constantly setting yourself up to lie to yourself about the goal that you want to achieve, then the reality is you're putting yourself in a position to make Monday and any other day a bad day, when really it's not. It's just about you shifting your mindset, right? We got to put our mindsets in the thing where, what am I going to win? And then also think about, how does this make sense? What is the driving force behind me wanting to get to this goal, right? So if I said, I want to lose 50 pounds by the time my birthday comes, I want to lose 50 by the time I'm 50. Well, I turn 50 in February, okay? So realistically, I'm not going to lose 50 pounds between now, the middle of November, and the middle of February. That's a setup for failure, isn't it? Y'all don't want to talk to me today. I'm going to talk to you. I'm going to bless myself. Because here's the thing. I know that in order for me to make a goal attainable, it has to also be realistic. You got to have that thing written down. So y'all talk to me. Who else is going to support the Georgia Senate? I double dog dare y'all to post one thing today on your page that says you want to get the Georgia Senate. 
because here's what what's happening. Reverend Warnock, Reverend Warnock, who's that's his goal. He wants to be in the Georgia Senate. Do y'all know that there were 21 Democratic candidates for Senate in Georgia? 21? And out of those 21, 10 of them, maybe 12, I can't remember if the majority, because I saw Reverend Warnock speak on, over the weekend in an interview. I want y'all to know this, and, and especially for you, Evan, because you're a Georgia resident, that they put those names in alphabetical order. Well, Warnock was second to last. And even in the midst of that, he still came in first. But now here's the issue I have. If you had all of those people who said, we want to have a better Georgia, we want the Senate to be Democratic, what happened, y'all, that they couldn't pull together and say, who of us, let's have a round table, let's just get together all the Democrat candidates and see who of us would be the best person? Because you know good and doggone well, 10 people can't go to Senate for two seats. It doesn't work like that. So what you really needed was for there to be some cohesiveness, right? What happens that we always end up doing that? Because you dilute it. Think about it this. I'm going to take you all the way back since it's lunchtime. Kool-Aid. Y'all remember Kool-Aid? Oh, yeah. Kool-Aid. We're going to talk about Kool-Aid. Now, you know, if you take one pack of Kool-Aid and put a whole bunch of water with one pack of Kool-Aid, that Kool-Aid is not going to taste like anything. Am I right? Somebody give me a thumbs up. If you take one of those flavor packs of Kool-Aid, which was your favorite pack? Because I'd like the Tropical Punch. Tropical Punch, yeah, Tropical Punch was one of my favorite. I don't know if it was red. You know, we just called everything red. Tropical Punch was my favorite Kool-Aid. Stay with me because I'm, I'm getting ready to tell y'all something. And do you know Tropical Punch was one pack? But now if you took that one pack and you put a whole gallon of water with that one pack of Kool-Aid, you weren't going to have, you won't even taste the Tropical Punch flavor. I mean, you could put sugar in it, but it'd just be colored sugar water, right? That's what's happening with the Democratic ticket. We got some fantastic candidates. We got one flavor pack that's strong. Why wouldn't the other people come together and support that one so it would be fortified? Because you know that that good flavor come better when if you don't pour as much water into it. Hello? If you don't put a gallon of water with that favorite pack and you just have a concentrated good... Woo! I don't have to buy some Kool-Aid. That made me just think dumb. I went back. Who else used to drink Kool-Aid, y'all? But I'm, I'm, I'm saying something to you about diluting. We can't... We cannot continue to dilute votes and dilute candidates because if you spread one thing out too thin, which is what I was talking about with the Kool-Aid pack, it, it makes it go, it, it dilutes the powerfulness of it, right? We can't have that. That is ineffective. That's what's happened in the Georgia Senate. Warnock, Reverend Warnock, ended up being a top candidate, but it is almost likely to say that if he had been the singular candidate for the Democratic ticket to start, instead of one of 10 or 12, he would have won outright. We wouldn't have a runoff. We are not in a position right now, and I told y'all, after the, after Biden won, which he has, I don't care what uh, the occupant is saying, that we are in a position where we can be more, more um, intelligent, that we can take a better approach what you say? Okay, well, hold on now, Ed. What you say? Tropical punch mixed with lemonade. You know what I'm talking about. Hey, Tara Richardson is there. How you doing? What's your favorite Kool-Aid flavor? Cause y'all, you took me back. That's exactly it. Tropical punch and lemonade. Is you got that sweet? You got that tart? But imagine if you literally had just one pack and you could just put a little bit of water. You know, if you put that in there and shake it up in a bottle like this. Woo, that's some good Kool-Aid, right? But if you put it in this container, it's not going to be as, as potent. It won't be as powerful. So I'm just telling y'all, we've got to do a better job of that. And we'll get an opportunity to talk about that. I'll still weave in because we're not done. We are just getting started. And I can tell you what I know. There are two things I'm going to say about making it happen and being motivated. We cannot lose our motivation when it comes to what's happening in our country. Serious. We've got to make sure that we stay focused and we stay diligent and we stay informed. We can't numb ourselves out. We can't take a back seat. We got to say not just in the front, but in the driver's seat of what's happening with our democracy because it is literally being challenged. We know what is good and fair and just. 
is literally at stake right now, right? And I want to be in a country where you and I have the liberty to pursue our own happiness and not be at the at the mercy of other people telling us what we can do with our bodies and that we don't have right to health care and education. We don't deserve that. We deserve to have a country that is better than that. So we've got to make sure. Okay, Derek, I'm going to come back. Oh, okay. We got to make sure that we do our part. And don't think because some of us are not Georgia residents, unlike Andrew Yang, who said, oh, okay, I'm going to relocate to Georgia. I'm about to make this happen, which thank you, Andrew Yang. But we have got to make sure that we understand it's our responsibility too. Each one of us has to know at least one person in Georgia. And all eyes are on Georgia now because it is literally going to determine who has control of the Senate. And again, y'all heard me talk about the presidential election is the only election of importance. The Senate, the Senate, the Senate, the Senate, the Senate. How many times do I need to say it? Go back to President Obama's terms. He was literally less empowered to do what he wanted to do, what could have been done for the country because of the Senate. Mitch McConnell made his vow. He took an oath that I'm gonna do my very best to make sure he's a one-term president. Well, that didn't work. But he he he's now back, and that's on us because we shouldn't have been in a position where Mitch McConnell should have been in a position to even think about going back to the Senate. Should have shut that down, but we didn't. Um, Georgia, I have posted, and I will post again, and I I'm just reach out, or if you have a position where you can offer funds and make a contribution to their campaigns, it is important. We have two of those candidates who are excellent. Um. We need, we need to make that happen. Okay, let me read your comments. Derek, you said, oh, Tara, wait a minute. Black Cherry. Okay, now did you mix Black Cherry with something else? You mix Black Cherry with lemonade? Black Cherry was one of those flavors that I, I, I didn't love, Tara. What did you do with the Black Cherry? Because that seemed like that's a base for something good. Tell me about that. Tell me more about Black Cherry. Because I want to know, maybe because I'm going to buy some Kool-Aid. And then that green apple Kool-Aid is so good. Okay. Derek, you said Stacey Abrams spoke about this subject on Friday on The View, did she? Love Stacey Abrams. Thank you, Stacey Abrams, for all your efforts. And y'all, I'm going to tell you something. There's an effort happening right here in Tennessee, very much in line with what Stacey Abrams has done in Georgia. And I would love for everyone to do their part to get involved. There's no reason with the number of people, some more than 32,000 people in the state of Tennessee alone that are for Biden. That's a lot of folks. That's enough That's enough just not for Shelby County and West Tennessee. That's enough for us to literally be in a position where we can make not just purple, but we can make Tennessee blue. Okay, let's see. What'd you say? You call your people in Georgia. Thank you, Tara. We all need to call our people in Georgia. And I bet we all got some people in Georgia. Hello, I do. I got friends, family members, and, the, and some more. Former co-workers live in Georgia. I want all of the Georgians. Are you Georgians? Georgiites, yeah, you Georgians. I want all my Georgia peaches. I need all of y'all to get on it, okay? Sweetie and I will move to Georgia if we could so we could make this happen. But Andrew Yang did it for us. So let me see what else to say. What you talking about, Black Cherry? You don't do anything else with Black Cherry? Hey, BJ! You just love Black Cherry. So you just do Black Cherry alone, for real? So it's like you do one packet of Black Cherry, you do two. I'm interested in knowing that. But you ain't gotta be sorry about loving black cherry. I um I'm gonna tell you what I used to do with black cherry back in back 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 in the day. I'd take black cherry and put it in some conditioner. Judge me not, I was in college, and use that as coloring for my hair. I would color my hair so it, my hair would look like cherry cola. That's a old that's a old school because you know that Kool-Aid is just dye. But um but tell me if y'all heard of that. Now that's way back, that's taking you back in the day, Monday. That's, uh, let's see. Hey, VJ, I'm glad you got a chance to check in on us. Okay, you do two packs. All right, you, you do two packs. Two packs, it's like, whoever used just one pack of Kool-Aid? I mean, did they even have on there that you could sell just one pack? I mean, buy just one pack? Could you really ever do anything with one pack unless you get like like this, like you got a bottle? Because I don't know what Kool-Aid, what one pack of Kool-Aid would ever do. I mean, it's just colored water. I don't know. All right, so let's see. What are y'all? You didn't no, not a single solitary soul. Okay, Terry, you said to make sure you called your people in Georgia to make sure they do what they were supposed to do. Thank you. Now I want to know for us a motivation Monday. What are you doing to make sure that you stay motivated? Well, how do you keep yourself accountable? Is what I want to know. And I'm getting out of here because I'm gonna go on back and and finish doing 
doing some more next now. But I want to know from you, really, what do you do to keep yourself accountable? What are you doing to hold yourself accountable? Are you just allowing yourself to lie to yourself day after day after day? And you see that goal and you write it down and you move to the next day and move to the next day. And then you look and here we are. You made that goal in March when the pandemic started. And now we're in November and you still haven't done it. That don't feel good, does it? That don't sound good? Don't taste good? Yeah, I know it doesn't. But it is not good because you're not holding yourself accountable. We got to hold ourselves accountable and make it happen on Monday. That's what we're going to do going forward. And the reason I'm saying that is because it perfectly segues into my new direction, November. We've got to start making sure that we take advantage. We've really been in a holding pattern and people have been complaining about not having this normalcy. Well, you get an opportunity now to create a new normal. You get an opportunity now to make things be the way you want, especially for those that are in a position to work from home. You have a certain liberty that you wouldn't have where you'd have to be in a completely different space. If there are things you want to get done at home or things you want to do for your so you literally have the time. Now, I know some places, because I've talked to some people who have coworkers and, and they're m members of management who think they're working from home, so they should be readily available to them every second of every day. Create some structure around your day. That's also in your making the Monday happen. That's making it happen, right? You've got to be in control. That's what this all is. It's either you're accountable and you're in control or you're not. Now, y'all going to know, we got the holidays are literally knocking on the door. If we don't keep control, now we're going to be in trouble because it's about to be super cold, and it is in some places already super cold, and we're going to be inside. So the opportunity to gather with people and be in a place where we can stand outside and be socially distant and appropriate with a mask is about to be over. Y'all saw those numbers have grown exponentially, and it is just dangerous. I'm imploring you not to gather with your family members that are outside your household. Dr. Fauci has, has said that. Dr. Gupta has said that. Uh, people in the medical professional whose names I don't know, but that are all connected to infectious disease and the CDC, they have said it. If you are in a position where you are planning to gather, please be careful if you're traveling for Thanksgiving, because we are literally days away from thanksgiving now and i cannot even imagine being on an airplane with recycled air i don't care how many HEPA filters they have you are still being exposed so please be careful let's see what did you say uh-huh <laughs> it did smell good it was black cherry smelled like black cherry but that black cherry color it, was, it made my hair like a um it was like a cherry cola that was what we called it. it was like cherry cola it was like a it was it was pretty it had just a nice red like burgundy-ish highlights to it terry it was pretty but i bet i didn't put any sugar in it so you know the sugarless kool-aid doesn't taste good but it did smell good with that condition that queen helene conditioner um that is funny the cholesterol you know what i'm talking about and so yes creating boundaries creating boundaries for yourself creating boundaries for other people to acknowledge and respect is important so y'all tell me see the just the fact that we have a reluctance to share here shows me that I hit the nail on the head, that you're literally taking your Monday for granted, that you're literally not making this day a day where you can put a check in a box on something that you've done. So I, I'm, I told y'all this is a new direction. We're going to talk about politics. We're going to talk about current events. But we're also going to be focused in singularly vision because my game now is to focus. My, I'm going to have tunnel vision because I'm honing in and I'm coming for the young adults. Y'all come on. Tell your young adults to come to me because the service that I'm providing is literally going to be for them. It's literally for anyone who's in a position that is looking to get a job. These kids now, these young adults, they don't know. They don't know how to interview y'all. They don't know how to ask questions. They don't know how to answer questions. They don't know what the dang on star method is. They don't know how to build a story. They don't know how to even introduce themselves. And why? Because we didn't teach them. So I'm here to do that. That's going to be what I can do. You send your people to me. Young adults, y'all need to come in co contact with me. Send me a DM. Go to my website. Schedule some time. I'm going to have a workshop. I'm going to create a master class that actually that's not true. The master class is created. I'm going to offer it because I want to I want to have success stories that I hear and not that I have family members and friends telling me that they were in a position to hire someone and they weren't able to make the hire because the person didn't know how to answer the questions or was ill prepared for the interview. We don't have time for that. The job market is too scarce right now for you to be qualified for a job and meet the prere prerequisites and then not be able to get the job. We're going to do better than that. We're going to do better than that. Let's see. They don't know how to show up. That's right. 
Tara, oh my gosh, it's unbelievable. They don't know. And not knowing is not bliss. The whole idea of people saying that ignorance is bliss is a farce. I'm telling you, Tracy T. Rowe and Cole, I personally have more than 20 years of experience working at a Fortune, five, Fortune 50 company and all the other years of experience in the full, gosh, 40 plus years that I've been working. I'm telling you what I know. I have tried this, I have tested this, and I have proven success. Mentor after mentor, mentee after mentee after mentee that have gone in, used the tools that I've given them, and had success. We need the young adults now to get to the position where when the job market is open again, and they will, that they will have not just to get an interview, but get the job. So that's going to be my focus. That's my motivation Monday. I'm getting ready to make a difference. I'm going to make this thing better for these babies because they deserve it. And they go, they're they going to school. They're getting the skills, but they don't know how to market themselves. They don't know how to introduce themselves. Am I wrong? Oh, it just makes me tired. But now I'm not going to be too tired to help. And I'll never be too tired to know that you matter. How about that? So now I'm giving you a great big hug. Mm, mm. It's a marvelous Monday. I want you to be motivated to make goals that are smart, make goals that are attainable, make goals that you can measure. And please make sure that you make goals that you can achieve. And don't set some unrealistic things like me losing 50 pounds in two months. That's crazy. I'm not gonna do that. Now I can lose 20 pounds in two months, sure, but not 50, right? All right, now, what am I gonna say? You already know, you matter to me. I love you and there's nothing you can do about it. If no one else tells you all the live long day this Monday that you matter, you matter. You are marvelously made and you matter. And I want you to take yourself, get all your assets together and get yourself something done today and make this Monday magnificent. You got it? All right, that's it, that's y'all. That's all y'all. I hope that you have a fantastic rest of the afternoon for this Monday. Look forward to connecting with you on Wednesday because we're going to talk about wellness. We're going to do some breathing and listen, be every day amazing and above all else, live like it's a gift because it truly is. I'll see y'all back here on Wednesday. Mwah.